What is up everybody? I'm no Lex given back with some more Hearthstone Battlegrounds, but before we get into the gameplay, I think I'm gonna play a game in this video as well. Kinda of wanna play some Battlegrounds here, but before we do that, we've got some patch notes. 27.4 patch notes. These were just posted. I'm recording this on September 18th here. And I'm gonna skip past most of this. I really don't care too much about what's going on in Hearthstone and in Arena. I haven't played Arena in a long time, though that used to be some of my favorite type of games to play, limited game modes. Uh, I've just kind of started to care more about auto battlers recently because there's like a finite pool of things to pay attention to, whereas like in Arena, there's so many random things and I never know what's in and out of it and it changes so you wind up you, you wind up needing to know like a deeper card pool in all of these games whereas auto battlers you can just focus on the here and now so I did see this though that anomalies are coming to traditional hearthstone and some people are feeling some type of way about it I don't know why I can click on these things that's kind of a weird UI thing going on there but yeah, anomalies are coming to traditional Hearthstone. I think it's cool, though I don't really play Hearthstone too much. I tend to do like the events usually, uh, but not even all of the time. But I did just briefly scroll down and see this new legendary skin, Cthun. I'm assuming that's what this is. No, this is the Cabal Nazoth Warlock Hero skin. Okay, so this is something you will have to buy. And this is, this is ridiculous. This is awesome. Um, yeah, that, this is, this is epic. Uh, way too much. That's gonna make people uninstall, I feel like. There's probably people that have this type of phobia, Cthulhu phobia. But here's the important part. Battlegrounds updates. Specifically, we are getting a damage cap update. So this is a huge change to the game and I did already see this on Twitter. The damage cap now persists for all players until the top four, instead of just the top seven, which is what it was previously, which was kind of weird. And specifically, it was even weird. I'm gonna make my camera a little bit bigger here. Show off Lily a wee bit. The damage cap stopping in the top seven was particularly weird because like oftentimes in lobbies one player would just like disconnect or quit and it was always confusing to me how the damage cap actually worked in these scenarios so now it's going to persist until the top four great the primary goal of, of the damage cap in battlegrounds is to protect players from taking too much damage too early We've heard a lot of feedback from the community that the system was not fully achieving that goal, so now we're expanding it even further. We'll closely monitor this change and make additional changes changes to the damage system is needed. Um, I think I'd like... So what if, like, we get the damage cap of 15? And then there's like, once you're in the top four, a damage cap of 25 or something. And then in the finals, maybe you could remove it. I'd, I'd maybe still like to see something like that. So part of the goal with these games is that damage should matter, right? There should be a choice between tempo and econ. You should never feel, I don't want to say you should never feel totally safe, because you shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to lose the game in any capacity during some of the setup turns. At least, I don't think that that should be possible, for, for my design philosophy. You want to make the late game... People don't want to sit around and wait in a game that they know they've already lost. That kind of feels terrible. And that's one of the main detractors that people bring up. But one thing that I always think about, especially in regards to Battlegrounds, because I think Storybook Brawl really got it right. I feel. And Storybook Brawl, even, I think the damage was a little bit, just a little bit too high. Uh, but the point that I'm getting to is if you make the end game damage so high, then really... 
early game damage almost doesn't matter. Now, having said that, there's been a ton of games and ton of videos where I go to like exactly one. And that's obviously crazy and cool and fun, especially if you can pull off a win from one health. But oftentimes, you will take damage overkill that, that makes the whole beginning of the game really just seem like a waste of time. And I think that is what you really are trying to curb here. So now by decreasing the late game damage, you're making the early game damage comparatively more relevant. Uh, which I think is an interesting way to look at this, but that's how I look at it. Dying from 30, dying from 50 isn't fun. Here's a quick example that I just wanted to showcase, and this is a little bit of an outlier scenario because we're using Recurring Nightmare playing Thorim, which Recurring Nightmare is just kind of crazy. It's like the pumpkin comps in Storybook Brawl, or more specifically the upgraded pumpkin comps in Storybook Brawl, uh, but Thorim can just kind of go nuts. And here I am playing up against the second place player in this lobby. And we can see that I'm almost guaranteed to win and I'm 75% to just kill them from here. Despite them being at 23 health over half of the starting life total, right? Uh, Cause they probably started at 40, I believe on this character. Uh, so they're down to 23 and then I am just gonna hit them here for 51 kind of crazy. My opponent's a good sport about it. They emote me, so I emote back. That wasn't just for BM there. But 51, this is kind of crazy. And we can see it was actually very, very likely to happen. And we weren't even in the top four yet, so they would have been protected in this case. Uh, but the important thing here is like, even if they were at full health, I would have killed them. Even if they had not taken any damage at this point, this entire game. So here they're just losing because they had to play against me on turn 11. And the rest of the game up until this point is just completely irrelevant. I don't think that that's a great thing. So I'm happy to see the introduction of more damage caps potentially. And this is like a start. We're also getting a few new anomalies. I don't think that we're gonna get them Oh, this text is like horrible. There's secret text and you can't read it. Okay. Oh, there isn't secret text. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> and maybe some anomaly updates and things. I'll read through these. These aren't in the game yet as far as I know, but we will take a look and see if any of these things seem interesting. Maybe, or maybe I'll just review them as they're released. I don't know, I've got them here on the screen. The start of each turn, spin the wheel. That's kind of cool, I haven't really played while the wheel was a thing, though I know it's a quest reward. I imagine there's other ways to interact with the wheel or there have been in the past. So I like this, getting to kind of recycle in some old content. Start of combat, give your leftmost minion Divine Shield and your rightmost minion Reborn. Cool, so what wants a Divine Shield? Hmm. What wants a Divine Shield? What wants Reborn? I don't know, they're both pretty cool. Um, I guess what wants Reborn... Or what wants... Uh, what wants Reborn is pretty straightforward, everything. What wants Divine Shield and be attacking first? Um, just big stuff? I don't know, it seems cool. Minions cost two gold, you cannot refresh. It refreshes after you buy. Whoa. That's cool. Guess which player will win your next combat. If you're correct, get three gold coins. So this is, a uh, three gold coins is, is a lot. And this is really going to reward paying attention. This is gonna, you're gonna have to be hyper-focused in this one. Seems really cool. Now, I think they introduced three a week. So this looks like a full month's worth of anomalies here. That makes sense. You patch every month. Uh, after you upgrade the tavern, Discover a tier one Dark Moon prize. Interesting. So this is going to potentially dictate 
when players level up. Because you might choose to delay your levels to get better prizes. But it also gives you a reward for leveling, which makes you want to do it faster. After you upgrade... No. After you win a combat, discover a minion of your tier. Otherwise, get a random one of a tier lower. Cool. Okay, that's interesting that you get something even if you lose. I could have seen this just as the first sentence. Uh, and I thought that would have been, like, an interesting thing. I really like additions to Battlegrounds that reward tempo. Similar thing up here. Sometimes it feels like early game tempo means nothing. So if there's mechanics that convert tempo into econ, I really like the buddy system, then those things seem pretty cool to me. After each combat, remove your warband. At the start of your turn, triple your gold. What? What? Okay, so my first thought here... And my only thought, really... Wait, this is crazy. This is... This is crazy. Um, triple your gold, even... So this is gonna get, this is gonna get nutty quickly. Um, I hope that there's more time on the clock, because that would be annoying otherwise. I'm trying to think if there's any other ways to bank gold other than through hero powers. I don't really think that there is. Uh, but elementals seem good because they I had to take a phone call real quick. I think we were here. I don't know if I said everything that I wanted to. Um, things that like permanently scale seem cool though. Uh, so that's going to be like Dancing Barnstormer, potentially other elemental related things, and then um, Undead seem really, really good because you can pass the stats on to future minions. So those are my first thoughts. I suppose Blood Gems as well. You could, like, make a handful of blood gems and then get a bunch of new stuff, though. That could also be awkward because you can't... Wait, could you actually... You can you can lock yourself out of the game. That is hilarious. So if you have a hand of 10 blood gems, you can't buy anything because your hand's full and you can't use any of your blood gems because you'll be out of friendly minions. So there's actually a way to just fully shackle yourself. Uh, that seems fun. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if uh, somebody will make that happen, I'm sure. I'll try to, if nobody else thinks of it, just for the clickbait of it all. Uh, at the start of the game... Sorry if that text looks bad. What did I have it on before? I feel like I had it with like a black highlight before. I don't remember. Uh, at the start of the game, all players discover a tier six minion from the same choices. So you're gonna see three things. Everybody's gonna see those same three things. So like, if everyone sees what's a six build around, if everybody sees beatboxer, I don't know, you probably still go for it, but you have to think about the metagame of, okay, everybody could have a beatboxer. I feel like a lot of games are going to start with just everybody picking up a swiper. Um, the 6-9. That will be a pretty nice game. I'm trying to even remember other tier 6s. Is the, is the tracker loaded up here? Yeah, but it's not showing me anything. So I can't think of the other tier 6s that'll be like really interesting at the moment. Oh, the pirate one? That sounds awesome. Uh, start at five health and five gold. Your hero can only take one damage at a time. Okay, so damage cap be damned. This is uh, super auto pets um, rules. I wonder if there's going to be pets in the artwork. Isn't this like exactly how super auto pets starts? Maybe you get less starting gold, but... Uh, yeah, I've thought about this a lot because I really like auto battlers and I've thought about different damage progression systems. 
I don't really have like the resources to make a game or the know-how to make a game. But I think that something would be fun that's like, I don't know. I think this seems fun. This really, really puts an emphasis on tempo. You can only lose five times. Do you ever take Busker in this? Busker loses you and it's it's different too because losing one of your health points isn't just losing 20% of your health. I would rather lose 20% of my health with a Busker than lose one of my five health points. And the difference is you can, 20% of your health sometimes doesn't matter in traditional battlegrounds because sometimes you lose 20%, you lose another 20%, and then you just take 50, right? I know that doesn't happen that often, but that's why taking 20% is actually a lot better than losing one of your five health because at no point will you ever just take lethal. You will lose one, then one, then one, then one, then one. So this is huge. Uh, this seems really cool. I'm excited to play. Hopefully it doesn't just lead to a bunch of people in the lobby disconnecting. Uh, I gotta get my rank up just so that way people stop disconnecting at the start of the game. And also I think there's some anomalies that will only appear once I'm like above 7k or something. Maybe above 6k. Minions in the tavern each randomly gain Taunt, Wind Fury, Divine Shield, or Reborn. Um, I don't know. I don't love it. Um... It's just enhanced, so Mechano, but not all not all of them can be winners. Um, hopefully this just has a less lesser chance to appear after the first week. All minion types are in the tavern. It always has seven minions. Okay, that's not where I thought that was going. I thought we were getting a world tree there for a second, but this is just like Fiesta. Uh, this is cool. This is cool. So I can't remember when Battlegrounds first came out where they're only like four minion types and every game you had all of them? Or was there like always one banner? I think when Battlegrounds first, first came out, there weren't minion type bans. So it'd be cool to, to try that out. It, it's going to be a little bit of a mess with seven or eight or nine different minion types that are currently in the game, but it seems fun. At the start of your turn, give minions in the tavern plus one plus one for the rest of the game. Sure. Reward cycling, so elementals, pirates, things like that. Cool. Uh, a fair reward anomaly now upgrades every five turns instead of every four turns and appears less frequently. That's a shame because I still have not mastered that. Piloted Whirlatron has been removed from the Bring in the Buddies anomaly, which I have actually not gotten to play yet even once. I have not seen that. Battlegrounds Cosmetics, we've got a new Human Woman, Twist, Duels, other stuff, Bugs, whatever, I'm sure. Oh, no! They had to put this in. This, it makes a lot of sense. Um... Dang, dang, that would have been really cool. Um, but this is this is much better for the game. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, whatever. Let's play some Battlegrounds. And we are in it. Our anomaly is Pruden Prudence. Prudence. Probably gonna take Inge. Unspent gold carries over to your next turn. And there is um, interest. If you saved at least five, gain one extra. I've never played this before. But there's only, you can only gain one interest. I'm definitely grabbing Inge here. Let's take a look at the available types this game. Demon, Dragon, Mech, Quillbore, Undead. Demon is cool with Inge. I always like that as a combo. And Mech's kind of too. 
mechas I can find. Um, Are you ready? I can find the um, Anoyotron. I think I should buy something because Major Hemming is really good. If you don't buy anything the first two turns, then you get to hit the Econ. It's not the strongest, but it'll fight hard. Have a good battle. I think you want to skip turn three, though. And actually play the first two turns still. That's tough. That's tough. I might, you know what? I'll see what everybody else does here. Let's see how many people level up on this turn, how many people bought something. One demon, one undead, one undead. Cthulhu. Skipped but leveled. Sire skipped but leveled. Alright, so everybody's still leveling, so at the very least, if I level, I haven't done something that wrong. But I'm up against the ghost. But if I level, I get to make more use of my hero power. I'm gonna level and hero power, because either way, next turn, I'm gonna have five gold. I think you either skip the first two turns, or you skip the third turn. And we get to pretty freely skip the third turn, continue to pump up our Picky Eater, giving it a plus two attack next turn, making it a four six. And then just banking that additional gold forever. So basically, I will always hang on to this five gold here. I mean, Anoyatron's tempting to be able to give it the major him. I could see locking. See locking and then picking up selfless hero next turn too. Yeah, I think I'm gonna lock for selfless hero. All right, let's take a look. How many minions is everybody playing? One, one, still zero. So the only way it's zero is if these two both skipped their first turn, right? So if they skip their first turn, but then their second turn they leveled, that's what's so confusing. So they still have the... Oh, Cthun, Cthun level leveled. Oh, wait, could it be Busker? No, it can't be. There's no pirates in this lobby. What do they got? What am I missing here? This thing not having a minion type? Is that really what I'm missing? I thought it would still say one mixed minions. It just says nothing. It seems I maybe misunderstood that mechanic. Now I've got 12 gold, so we're just always gonna try to keep um, we're gonna always try to keep 5 gold here. A lot of people just leveled that turn. That could have been good as well. And all your gold carries over, right? Oh. Oh. oh so leveling up's pretty good. All right, so next turn I might just level up, minor him. I'm gonna have I'm going to have 14 gold next turn. This is going to cost 4. I'll have 10. I could then roll and buy something. Or I could just let it carry over again. I should probably just carry over my gold for as long as I possibly can get away with. Do we win this? I think we win. We tie? Yeah, we tie. Cool beans. The battle is really raging out there. Oh, I'm up against the ghost again. So we clearly just level if we are up against the ghost. That's kind of insane. And I'll just bank all this. I mean, Nerubian Death Swarmer is fine. 
but I just see no reason not to just bank all this gold and level. Next turn, I will have 19 gold and leveling up will cost seven. So I'll probably continue to level. I did this in the right order, right? I leveled and then I used Major Him. Yeah, I did. Okay. Level three, level three. Is Cthun on four yet? Yeah, Cthun's going all the way. I wonder if they're using their hero power, and I wonder if they have a Wrath Weaver or not. It's the only neutral thing, but I, I really thought if you had one neutral minion, it would have said one mixed minion. Don't but maybe because it has no type at all, it just doesn't say anything. Giving this the additional attack makes this board so much better. Continue to give this thing the extra health. Your minions really pulled their weight. So I think it makes sense to level up here again. Yeah, they're leveling. We have a lot of cash here. Let's roll and maybe start to spend a little bit. We can start to put extra health on an impulsive trickster. That's kind of cool. I can also put extra Econ onto a Noyatron. That seems pretty great, too. Good tactical choice. I like where this is going. I think it's hard to not talk in Bob quotes. I think that was a Bob quote, what I just said. Next turn. Oh, okay. Maybe this isn't who we want to follow. I'll be really curious to see if Cthune can pull this out. It would also be really funny if... No, 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 they're not just disconnected. I was like, what if they're just disconnected? Uh, but they're not, because they actually have... Uh, they're actually level 5. So what is this? Yeah, this is Galakrond. Galakrond has some tough decisions in a lobby like this, because this is a greedy anomaly, and they have a greedy hero power. Start of your turn, add two to your hand. It doesn't tell us the quest, though. It only tells us the reward. Hmm. Either way... Yeah, if they leveled up on turn three, that means that they really have not played a single minion yet. Curious. Very, very curious. Okay, we get to kill our imp here. Give seven extra health to this guy. That seems great. And then this should be enough to win it. It's a tie, right? It's a tie. If you had to choose, if you had to choose. Alrighty. Could grab another selfless hero here now. Could level up. I don't want to get too far ahead. Like, I want to recognize that Cthune is, is a greedy, is a greedy greeter. I don't hate the selfless hero, but I feel like I should maybe try to pick up some fours while I am level four. So what is there? There's demons, undead. There's some strong stuff here. Let's roll. Could make another Anoyatron, though. Could also find, um, Deflectobot. I think this is just a really good build around. I am the first Crypt Lord. Could take Micro Mummy. This is great, though. I don't hate an Impulsive Trickster, but I think it's going to be good to grab a Risen Rider and a Noob. I think this is just a solid board at this point. <clears throat> Probably order it like this. So a few different pairs this turn. I'm I'm enticed by the impulsive trickster, but I think that an early a noob is enough of a direction. I was looking for like 
Deflectobot, a noob, Scrap Scraper, or potentially Malkazar. Or maybe even this. Uh, but I think that one of those, like, solid build-arounds, probably not Bonker. Um, Prickly Piper, but, but I'd rolled past those already. And then I did see an Elise that also could have been something to consider. Because I could have, like, banked the gold, banked the rolls. Though Elise's may be better when you don't have gold banked. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You wind up having some, like, really important turns, friend. but you could run out of time on those important turns. All right, a fellow, a noob enjoyer, and a Deflectobot player. Fortunately, they got first attack, which is huge, because it means that my Risen Rider was unable to clear out their noob. So a little bit annoying. Win the 50-50, please. Okay, that's good. Is that enough to win it? Oh, I'm 80% to win this combat. Did I find it? Looks like I did. And I usually hit him for five here. We are now into the top six of the lobby. So I don't know if damage cap is already in effect. I feel like no. I feel like the thing that I read at the beginning of this video hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Um, I like a 5-6. I really like Handless Forsaken. Uh, I mostly like the 5-6 because I can give this Taunt, which I think is good. Is leveling good? Yes, because then I can find Champion. But I'm gonna grab this. Oh, maybe I didn't want to... Grab all of this here. So actually giving this thing taunt is potentially more important. I just should have grabbed the hand instead. But giving this taunt is really important when you give it a bunch of health. I think I'm going to lock onto this handless Forsaken. I could also sell out of two things. And then pick it up. And still hit my econ point. Which might be right to do. This is kind of on its way out. All right. I think this is just so good that I want it. Now I can look for Champ, Hungering a Bomb. Still pretty high in health. I lost three health this game. I think on turn two, and otherwise I haven't lost. Any combats? Sounds right. Do we have the stats here? This is a big Wrath Weaver. Getting some Blood Gems. Looks like pretty good odds to win it, though. And we're scaling. So I'm feeling pretty good about this one right now. You just need one, one beefy boy to hold all the imp health at the end. You're good at this. Oh yeah, this is giving me extra gold too. I did forget about that. That's awesome. Should I have just leveled? Five, six, five, four, three, six. I'm happy for C'Thun that they've been able to hang in there. Let's roll one or two more times for Champ. I guess just one more. And then if I don't hit it here, I'll level up. We do get Risen Rider, but I don't think that's worth delaying this level up. 
And I could either do this or actually this starts to look good too. Just because this card has so much health on it that giving it some attack makes it more relevant to stick around for a while. So I'm going to do that. An 812, as you can tell, is immediately pretty beefy. And now instead of just bumping into things, it has the chance to make some reasonable trades. So now we're level six. We are potentially rolling for Eternal Summoner at this point. Uh, I don't think I ever find myself... No, you know what? I think I would still go into Demons here with Famished Felbat. So if I find Famished Felbat, I'll go into that. It's probably unreasonable to play Quillbores. But I don't think I'm going to rule it out. If I could put together the Bristle back comp. I don't think I have interest in Charlie or Flat Tusk, but I will buy Bristleback, Felbat, and I think I'm actually kind of excited about Felbat the more that I think about it. The fact that it now pumps itself up. Used to say other demons, now it just says your demons. Uh, makes it a very easy comp to pivot into. It's very good with Impulsive Trickster. Heck, do I take a walking fort here and just try to tempo the lobby? It's, it's weird because it feels like we're almost in the top four of this lobby. Uh, but me and I'm in third place sitting on 35 health. So it seems like there's still some game left to be played. We'll see how this goes. We haven't played against Gallencrond in a minute either. So we'll see how these numbers are looking. They've got the demons. It doesn't mean I just want to let them have it for free, though. It's going to be a very strong comp. Things just barely hanging on, kind of annoying. I take a ton here. Is there a new damage cap? No. Okay. So that's where the new damage cap will come in handy. I would have only taken 15 there and still been at 20, which means I could have taken 15 again. Uh, not interested in any of this. End of turns trigger twice. Don't think that helps me. Better hire a recruit while you can. I'm over Blood Gems. I guess I'll go for Champion of the Primus and, and try to make something happen here. I might give Champion the health rather than Impulsive Trickster. Now I just look to make some summons here. I don't think I'm going to go for Hungering Abomination. Could go for the Gift Horse just for how well it works with the champ. Nah, I'll, I'll just find another undead. This is fine. I probably want to bank my econ though still. So let's sell out of this, play another a noob. I think I'm likely to get rid of the Impulsive Trickster soon. So this is really a turn that's just all about pumping up my undeads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we could get plus five attack on my undeads this turn. Avenge three, triggering three times, and then two noob triggers. No sense selling off. Like, if we put in all three of these things, selling out this and this, that's still only two more additions. If we also sold out the noob, then 
I'm uh, going up one Avenge to go down one Anub, so it's it's the exact same thing. Like to potentially find a Baron. So at the beginning of this video, I during like the the review part, I showed off this game with Recurring Nightmare. Part of the reason that this deck or this didn't work is I pulled off of the Anubs too quickly. So hopefully that can be lessened learned and I can apply it to this one and just really scale these Anubs in a way that's going to allow me to beat the um, demon players in the lobby. We've got a Quillbore, a demon, another undead, and a mech. So in this one, I'm really gonna scale. It's annoying that neither of my Anubs died against the ghost. That is really, really annoying. I'm still gonna get some Avenge triggers, but man, does this smart. <laughs> I got two Avenge triggers. That's where we'll have to leave it for this one, unfortunately. Dang, dang, that would have been a really great opportunity for some nice scaling, but now we are into the top four. No, we're not. Cthune has still hung on. You go, Cthune. Do you get access to Major Him here? Go ahead and hire one of these recruits. Tripling a noob is reasonable. Doesn't really do anything for me. Okay, yeah, yeah. Soul Splitter. Almost rolled past that one. Soul Splitter is insane. Might be time to cash in my Econ before it's too late. Um, I kind of like getting rid of both of these things and playing a Risen Rider. Yeah, the, the Econ for this is pretty nice as well. Getting to do this, and then I just get to put my him onto one thing. I feel like it makes a decent amount of sense to put it onto a reborn card. And a card that I'm never going to get rid of from this comp. One, two, three, four. So I still have... Uh, no, no, I've got more than nine things that die. This is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So 11 things, 12 things can die here, potentially 14. So we're looking at four Avenge three triggers plus two more. This could really be some nice scaling if I don't die here. I'd like to add another hand to the comp, and then I'd like to add potentially either Murgul, Eternal Summoner, which is more or less the same as Handless Forsaken, and um, uh, the, the guy that gets taunt. It's a three? Is that right? Where's that? Yeah, it's a three. Relentless Sentry. So this could also be a good one to grab... I'd be looking to replace the Risen Riders. Looking to triple a noob as well. That'd be pretty good if I can triple a noob and grab a summoner from that. I think that seems pretty good. Quite soon, I'm going to have to stop caring about the additional gold each turn and just start. Uh, selling through all my gold every turn. You don't have to roll down at the end of the turn. So they have a golden soul splitter. Is that enough to give them the win? I'm 100% to lose this one in 99.9 to take lethal. So it does seem like that is going to come into effect here. I don't think I've hit the super high roll. Don't even know what that would necessarily look like, but They've had so many things survive with exactly one health that I have to imagine we are not going to survive with one health here. Nope. 
I take 21. So, if the damage cap was still in effect this game, because I, I did not take any damage in the early game, and then I took over 20 damage twice, and I died in fifth place. So I would still have an extra, like, maybe even 14, 15 health here. I think I would even be above the damage cap one more time and be able to stay in it. So damage cap coming soon to Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Not in effect yet today. Probably in effect by the time you are watching this video. But for today, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.